This was a big win in court yesterday for Apple. The judge here in the Eastern District of New York ruling uh, that ultimately he was unimpressed with the government's argument that the 1789 All Writs Act applies to this particular case of unlocking an iPhone of an alleged drug dealer in Queens, New York. The judge suggesting here that Congress is a better place to adjudicate all this than the court system. Here's uh, a little bit from the judge's actual ruling. Here's what he said. He said, the assistance the government seeks here, bypassing a security measure Measure that Apple affirmatively markets to its customers is not something that Apple would normally do in the conduct of its own business and is, at least now, plainly offensive to it. That's U.S. Magistrate Judge James Orenstein in the ruling that came down last night. Apple had a gleeful reaction to all this, an Apple executive uh, telling reporters last night that the burden in this case was actually lower than it is in the San Bernardino case. That gives Apple confidence going into that court battle. And, of course, the government said it was disappointed here, plans to appeal. We'll hear a lot more about all of this today, guys, because on Capitol Hill they're holding a hearing. FBI Director James Comey will be up there and also uh, Apple's general counsel testifying about their arguments in the San Bernardino case. Congress sort of waiting in the wings here, not necessarily ready to weigh in and whether they could weigh in at all in this uh, election year with Congress as gridlocked as it is, is another question. But the judge here in this case seeming to suggest that Congress is the better venue for all of this, guys. Uh, Eamon, how, how much do you think this would weigh on what the what the justices or the judges do out in California. And the reason I ask is there is a view that this particular judge has had a predisposition towards the Apple uh, case or the or, or Apple's argument from the beginning. If you remember, it was this particular judge who actually asked Apple to weigh in in a way uh, that was uh, somewhat surprising, given that these things don't normally happen that way. Yeah, I think legally there's no bearing here on what the judge in California can do, and that will go through a separate process up to the Ninth Circuit out on the West Coast. So uh, legally here, uh, you know, there is some, some precedent established, uh, but mostly this is the battle for political and public opinion now at this point up on Capitol Hill. Going into this hearing today, this gives Apple some wind behind its sails here and its argument that what the government's asking is simply onerous. But you're right, this is a different case. You know, this is an Apple uh, iPhone that was running iOS 7, not iOS OS right. 9. So technically, there are some differences here in terms of how Apple would go about accessing this. And what Apple's saying is ultimately the government is asking it to do more in that San Bernardino case. Right. So there are similar but different cases. Right. Here. Eamon, a public policy question. If Congress were to get involved and actually write a law that somehow stipulated that technology companies um, in, in situations where there's some kind of terrorist threat uh, would otherwise be demanded to help and, and write code and manufacture product, we'll do whatever is supposed to happen. What would that do internationally? Well, that's Tim Cook's argument. You know, if the United States government says this, what's to stop other governments around the world from doing that? What about the Chinese government? What about the Russian government? And then, you know, Tim Cook also said in his nationally televised interview, where does that stop? If the government can order us to create code to do this particular thing, can they order us to create code that would turn on the camera in your iPhone, that would turn on the recording device in your iPhone, uh, that would monitor you? What about other devices that are in your house? You know, where does the slippery slope end? That's the question that Apple's been asking. The government says, well, look, you know, we have a, a whole 200-year history of sorting out the balance between privacy uh, and the government's right to investigate here. And ultimately, if we have a search warrant, we can search your bedroom. Why can't we search your iPhone? Hey YouTube fans, I'm Landon Downey from CNBC. Thanks so much for checking out our channel. Here you'll find videos packed with all the info that you need to be smarter about your finances. Be sure and subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me to see CNBC's original series, Young Money, Tech Bet, Kramer's Mad Money, and all the latest from CNBC.